Morning everybody. Today we're going to look at something called compound angle formulae. If you do further maths you've seen, a, seen two of these before. Um, you've seen the proof of it as well. We're not going to go through um, proof of these today necessarily. However, if you want to see one um, in action, uh, just have a look at the very first page of chapter 7. There's a nice diagram um, in the blue box towards the bottom that shows you how to go about doing this. If you once I have a go at that, feel free to do so. If you're struggling to understand how that's working at all, um, there's, I think one of the, if you look on the YouTube channel, I think if you go to Complex Numbers and Geometry 3, I think it was, um, there's a walkthrough of that from me. So feel free to go and have a look at it there. Anyway, the compound angle formally um, are quite useful for various things. Um, which we'll have a look at a bit later, but in the first instance, let's just let's just write out what they are. So you have sine a plus b is equal to sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. There's also cos of a plus b. is equal to sine A cos B. That's right, I'll start that again. It's cos A cos B. Minus sine A sine B. And we've also got tan of a plus b is equal to tan of a plus tan of b all over 1 minus tan a tan b. Okay, so a and b's are just angles. Um, so I can use these a couple of different ways. One way I could use it is if this was, and I'll look at this example in a moment, if I wanted to work out what sine of 75 was, um, now let's pick a different one. If I wanted to work out, uh, no sine of 75, sorry, uh, sine of 75, um, I could let A be 45 and B be 30, that is equal to 75, yes. Um, and the reason why I might want to do that is because I know what, sine and cos of 45 is and I know what sine of and cos of 30 are so I could work out an exact value for this without a calculator for example um, excuse me. so what we would like to do first of all though is hopefully you've noticed that all of these ones down here have got um, plus 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 obviously we could have a minus angle here and if we wanted to do that, or yeah, if we wanted to do that, that'd be fine. Um, but it would then make it sine of a minus b essentially. Um, so what I'd like us to do is try and derive what the other three would be if we were a negative instead of a positive. So the easiest way to do this is thinking about properties of uh, sine, cos, and tan and whether they're odd or even functions. Now we haven't talked about odd or even functions before and it's not specifically on your A-level syllabus. However, it's quite useful in this situation just to speak about them um, and you might find them useful later on. So we've got two different ones. So let's start with the even function. So even functions are when I put f of minus x is equal to f of x. And that means it's symmetric. Um, around y axis. So if you think about which functions are symmetric around the y axis, um, in this case, we've got cosine x is symmetric. 
second one we're going to look at is odd and odd functions slightly different f of minus of x is equal to minus f of x and we say these are so these ones are symmetric wrt means with respect to so these are symmetric with respect to the origin now that seems a bit weird because we don't normally talk about symmetry to do with a point as opposed to a line so what we mean symmetric with respect to the origin in this case is well, symmetry basically means it's the same either side of the line or they're just mirror images and so if you come away from the origin in one direction you go up and then down and then up and then down if you go in the other direction you do exactly the same pattern but just a mirror image so you go down and then up and then down and then up so that's all that means and hopefully you can see from that one that sine of x would be an odd function um, and hopefully with a little bit of thought you'll also realize that tan of x is as well so if you're taking all those together that means that cos of minus x is equal to cos of x sine of minus x is equal to minus sine of x and tan of minus x is equal to minus tan of x okay so what I'd like you guys to do is just by look, using these and those three at the top is can you try and think of what the following would be sine of a minus b cos of a minus b and tan of a minus b okay pause the video have a go at those come back to me when you're done okay so the best way to think about this is by saying sine of a minus b is equal to sine of a plus minus b and then you can start thinking about how this changes the original formula so the original formula was sine a cos b so a is not changing the b is changing to a minus so if i put a minus into the cosine one i just get what i started with and if i stick a minus into sine i get a negative version so a was the same, so that stays the same. This is minus, but if I stick minuses into coses, I just get the normal cos. Cos of a hasn't changed because a hasn't changed. Sine of minus b changes to a minus sine of b. So altogether, that should give us sine of a cos b minus cos a sine b okay so if you didn't get the other two have a quick go at those again now and then come back to the video when you're finished so just pause now and here's the rest of them here so cos a cos b plus sine a sine b and tan a minus tan b all over one plus tan a tan b so the writing's a bit of a mess Okay, so just to get a bit more familiar with these, what I'd like you go to do is, can you go to exercise 7a, and can you just do question 9, and check your answers. Once you've done question 9, can you come back to the video, please? I'll do one example, and then give you some exercises to do from exercise 7b. Okay, so have a go at those. Pause the video now, and come back to me in a minute. Okay, so just one example to look at before I let you get on with exercise 7b. <clears throat> so what I might want to do is write cos 75 to the third and do that without using a calculator. So what I need to think about is what, which one of the compound formulae will get me to 75 and I need to think about which values I know of cosine or sine for that matter. So we know that we've got 30, 45, 60, 
and 90 as long as we're not talking about tan to play with. So we have those ones already to play with. So we just look at this and think, okay, how can I get to a 75? We might need to add, we might need to take away. In this case, it's easy to add a 30 and a 45 together. So cos 75 is equal to cos of 45 plus 30. Really doesn't matter which way you write these ones down. Cos 45 plus 30 is cos of 45, cos of 30. And the way I always remember this is if it's a plus there, it's a minus here. Just because. And that's going to be sine 45, sine 30. So I'm going to let you have a quick moment to see if you can remember what all of these trigonometric identities are. And then we'll carry on. So cos 45 is 1 over root 2, or root 2 over 2, depending on which way you look at it. Cos 30 is root 3 over 2. Sine of 45 is 1 over root 2. And sine of 30 is a half. You bring that all together, you get root 3 over 2 root 2. Take away 1 over 2 root 2 which equals root 3 minus 1 over 2 root 2. You could um, rationalise the denominator now if you so wished. I can't say I'm too bothered about doing it and um, it, you wouldn't necessarily, uh, it wouldn't ask, it would specifically ask you to do so in the exam if it wanted you to do so. If you were going to do it, all you need to do is times top and bottom by root 2, so you would end up with root 6 minus root 2 over 4. Okay, so what I'd like you guys to do now is can you go to exercise 7b or can you do questions 1 through to 5, I think it was. Yep, 1 through to 5. Okay, um, that's it for today, and I will speak to you guys again tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.